Hello. Hello. No, I've been on the calls for over an hour already. So, where where are you located? Uh, Steve's got another call. I don't know if he's going to be able to join. I got elected to the uh, Open SSF board. What is oh, Open SSF? <laughs> Thank you. I was really surprised. There was a lot of people on that list. <laughs> I had forgotten really I even threw my name in the in the hat and I started getting all these emails to join the governing board. I was like, why am I getting? I was like, oh my goodness, I must have gotten elected. <laughs> so um I, I don't I, I've got another call like in 15 minutes, but I did want to let you guys know. So I uh, was able to get into Bevy. Um I don't know if anybody else has played on it, but I was able to get into Bevy and then I uh, created an event for Ortilius and it does not have its own platform. So you have to give it your Zoom account just like you would in a meetup. Is that uh, so? That's yeah. what I found. I couldn't figure out how to use their platform to, to run it. Ah. Okay, because it, there is an option when you create a meeting to use your own, to use Bevy or some other platform with a URL. Uh, I wonder if I but, don't have access don't to it. Sorry? I wonder if I don't have access to it. Yeah, it's not on the platform. Yeah, it's not on the platform. Oh, if you like, I can share my screen and see how it looks, show how it looks yeah. when I do it. Before you guys, um, we get into any gory details about CD events, let's get this done. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Uh, yes. I never remember the URL to it. What I is the know. URL nowadays? Uh, it's community. Yes. Uh, community. It's community. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, just a second. So you I see up there now. Welcome. <laughs> Right up the front, we got CD events. He's got something up there, and then Artilius's visionary summits up there. Let's see if I can share my screen. I seem to have some problems with my computer. Let's see if this works. Do you see my screen now? I can yep. see it. Yep. Uh, yeah, perfect. Your, so if we go to the chapter for. Especially uh, interest groups you know, and city events. Or, you know, we have an upcoming event now for the online webinar tomorrow, uh, 27th of April, which we probably will discuss a bit later. So that's up there. Group, I can't or, edit it from here. Where, where do I edit it now? Ah. Okay. Uh, this is not where I edit things. Uh, let's see. In the top. Edit, yeah, here. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Um, da, da, da. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, Azure, even though it's cheaper, it's just so Here's some. I can choose select virtual online, event platform. That be virtual or external URL. See, I only had external UL come up for me. Oh, interesting. I'm going to have to, I'll reach out to Roxanne. Was it in some other chapter you set it up then, or? 
It wasn't in city events, right? It city was event. for uh, Ortelius. She gave us a, a mm -hmm. community for Ortelius. It wasn't in city events, no. Because yeah. I asked her to give so me so a separate one so I could play different. on it. There might oh. be some different setting them for that. I don't know. Uh, and have you played on that? That bevy virtual? No. Uh, I, I plan to do it tomorrow. So <laughs> what a brave man, <laughs> <laughs> man you are. <laughs> test event tomorrow. Uh, and uh, this is not a public event. It's uh, private, so you need the link to find it. Uh, but then I would hope we can try out. Then, so we can see if it works at all before we have the real meetup on April right. 27th. Uh, so, if you can join them, it would be great. Uh, the, the ones that are able to, it's the same, same time slot that we have. Now. Okay, let me find it. Uh, where, and, uh, you can see it probably, so I need to send the link to it. Where can I send the link? Uh, to put it in the chat? Yep, I will. Yeah, all I have is your April 27th one that I posted. But this one is private. It's, it's out there, but it, there's, it's not no link to it. But now you have the link in the chat. So if you're able to, please join tomorrow. Okay. All right, I've added myself. I will if I'm if I if my calendar is open, I will definitely join that so I can see how that looks. And I gotta call Roxanne or send an email to Roxanne to find out why. I only have external, I don't have a bevy virtual. I looked all over for it. I was like, I know people say that he's got one, and I was so frustrated. It was like, well, okay, I guess it's that's how it works. Yeah. Oh. All right. That's it then. Yep. By the way, I have some issue with my camera. That's why I'm not on, on video. There's something wrong. We just thought you were shy today. Yeah, some of that information. Rough night. So, what's next? What should we bring up now? Uh, yeah, let me share the agenda. Trying to also, if you have any, um, final language, um, you can go through it and uh, scan like uh, for Java code, there's a couple of good uh, tools. Uh, SIP, all right, that will look at the uh, under the output. Can you, can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, yes. Do you want to add yourself to the participant list? Um, so I had a few things in the agenda for today uh, with um, the city events, the city con event, and the city events con. <laughs> conference updates um and then yeah sdks and spec discussion so if there is anything else like that's that we, uh, sorry tracy could you mute yourself it's like a bit yeah out. sure i wonder why my my gain on my speaker is doing that uh thank you um yeah, so uh, basically we have some uh, discussion about events, so some still some housekeeping to, to be done around those. Uh, and then as the case, just wanted to mention that we have our first PRs merge there, and then we had two um, items for spec. Uh, but let me know if there is uh, anything else that you would like to discuss in the agenda today, or that you want to, to put on the agenda or change order. Otherwise, we, we can get started. So I see we have Kevin also with us. Um, I don't remember, Kevin, have you been here before? I have not been to this meeting. I've been to the Monday meeting one time uh, a couple of weeks ago. A quick introduction. I am a product manager for GitLab and uh, CD events 
and I learned about CD events towards the beginning of this year. And frankly, it's something that we, like this concept of uh, having events for GitLab itself, it's, it's, I, I viewed that as a really big need and obviously interoperability with other systems is also important. So I wanna get myself involved to see what you're talking about, uh, to see how we might participate and basically learn from you. Mm, nice. Uh, we're discussing a little bit on, on the uh, <clears throat> the meetups that we're having in the, in the coming in, um, both in CDCon and, and EventsCon, but you'll hear more about when talking. Sandra, I took over there from you. Sorry, I missed that last part. What was it? Anyway, we can go on. Yeah. Uh, it's great to have you, Kevin. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we have a, a few events coming up. Um, so, uh, so one thing that um, I wanted to start mentioning is the CD events. Uh, so the event at CDCon, uh, it's basically we have a uh, half a day there. It's going to be June uh, the 9th uh, in the afternoon. Um, and uh, there was a deadline on, on Friday to submit some, some debuts, but uh, hopefully we can still amend them if, if needed. So for the event title, is I put like CD events community summit and I uh, drafted a small event uh, description there. Um, but yeah, if you have any input or any suggestion how we could improve on that, please let me know and then uh, I can send it to, to Celia who is uh, the contact for this. Um, yeah, so um, hopefully the, the conference is in Austin, uh, but yeah, so the, the idea is to try and make this an hybrid event so as many of us as possible can can join in and different from uh, city events con the, the idea for this event uh, would be to to be more of a workshop or design type of event so hopefully opportunity for us to to meet and discuss about the, the spec and uh, integration with uh, other projects doing some work on the sdks and so forth just the comment that the regular one, I guess, depending on the restrictions of traveling and everything. Do you know if there by any chance will be some kind of virtual possibility on the June 9th? Um, yeah, I think I think so. I hope so. At least that's what we uh, discussed in the beginning, that this would have to be a hybrid event um, mm. because uh, when we did the, the Google form at the beginning. I think a lot of uh, people said that um, they would be able to join remotely uh, only. So I, I think for, for this to work, it, it would have to be a hybrid event. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it affects a bit how, what kind of activities you can have. I mean, whiteboard sessions is not the best thing for hybrid events, maybe, but yeah, you need to sort that out. That's true. Hmm. Um, yeah, so there's still some time until that. I think the, the, the main deadline for, for now was to, to say what kind of, uh, to give like title, description, expected number of participants. I think we can spend some more time in the next few weeks planning for, for it in details. If you do, well, by the way, again, when you say afternoon, by the way, does that mean afternoon Texas time or afternoon European time? Uh, that's afternoon, it's afternoon Texas time, it's more or less night in Europe. Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, hmm. Okay, let me see. So it would make more. It would make more sense to to have it morning. 
um, because of this. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it. But let me go and see um, if we can switch back um, to the morning slot. Right. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, I guess you can, if you like, you can invite me in the discussions on that as well, uh, since you will be away soon, if you like to share it somehow. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll add you to the, to the email thread. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Um, anything else? Um, on this okay i'll move on to cd events con um so the registration for the event is now uh, live so if you're registering to kubecon you can add yourself uh to, to the event which is great um still missing on the event page so if you go to, to this url which is the event page uh, and register still says registration coming soon, but it's in fact um, already there. Um, yeah, so I, I asked Emily to, to update this and hopefully it will be done soon. Also, we have a draft agenda is not fully up to date uh, with the latest uh, and greatest news. Uh, but this is what it looks like, and uh, I think as soon as it's finalized, it will be linked into, um, into the event page. And yeah, so compared to this, uh, the session at 1450 is now confirmed, so uh, Mauricio and Ishan will uh, be discussing, uh, talking about Knative and CD events. Um, and also, um, there will be some uh, content uh, on Jenkins uh, that is uh, confirmed. So uh, Oleg uh, kindly offered to, to present that. And they also actually got a few minutes ago uh, an email back from Shruti, who was originally on the GSOC uh, project with Jenkins and events that she would be interested in presenting. So I think between the two, we'll see what we can um, we can have here as a talk. Uh, but yeah, so um, Jenkins will be uh, represented here in the in the agenda, which is great. Um, yeah, so the, the panel is still in the works. Um, again, logistic with travel, they're a bit of a hinder there. Um, but we'll see if we can organize it uh, either remotely or in person. And yeah, so we are also discussing with the Linux Foundation team how the setup for a hybrid event will be working exactly. I mean, most of the talks will be in person, but there are some uh, remote participants. And so we need to clarify all the details of the streaming content in and out. And Things like if we if we need to manage the virtual room, um, who's doing that? Um, yeah, that's kind of the open questions. Any question or comments on city events gone? I'm happy to help in any way. It's let me know how I can, for example, like if someone needs to manage the virtual room, I don't, there's no other volunteers. I'm happy to, to figure out how to do that. All right, thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that's still uh, clarifying how that's going to work, but uh, I'll let you know then if there is um, anything. Um, you, will, will, you will be there in person, right? Correct. 
That's great. Um, cool. So looking forward to meet you there then. Okay, anything else on the event? Um, the, the last thing, uh, as soon as uh, the registration link is fixed there, um, I plan to uh, start promoting this uh, on the uh, CD event Twitter. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know if there are other channels that you think we can promote this through, apart from CDF channels. Of course, Roxanne is working on a, a blog, blog post already for this. I guess we have Slack or and um, maybe the homepage. I don't know. And so the, the website homepage, right? Yeah. And I don't know if we want to uh, the readme, uh, if we want to update that also. Uh, so you see that uh, the uh, organization readme I'm talking about. And Slack. Yeah. So it would be. Yeah, we could try and put it on the website as well. Cool. All right. Anything else on this? Okay, uh, moving forward then. Um, and yeah, just thanks everyone for all the contribution on the event. So for the SDKs, um, we have a first few PRs couple of PRs for the Java SDK. Just wanted to share this. Um, yeah, so there is no readme yet, uh, but we do have uh, initial uh, APIs uh, for the SDK, so which is great. So this is based out of the version of the, of the draft version of the spec. Um, and as soon as we finish the, the series of PR, um, when we get to 0 0.1 version of the spec, we can adapt this. But we didn't want to, to hinder progress on this one uh, because of the, the work that we're doing on the spec. OK. Um, yeah, just wanted to share that. In terms of work on the spec, um, so Matthias PR was merged. So thanks for this. So the introduction to CD events. So we have some more context now in the uh, readme. And some background and what we provide here. And also- And then the rest the is in, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. 
yeah, the rest is in the in the cloud binding, uh, which is also published to the, to the website. So if you go to here in the primer, I think. Oh, no, the primary yes. Sorry. We got the design reflections here. So thanks for this, uh, Matthias. Mm -hmm. Good luck. So um, just as a side note, the way uh, the documentation gets on the website is um, is using deep sub sub modules on the city events dev uh, repo. So for now, I'm doing this manually. So whenever we have new documentation, I I go there, update the sub module, and push. Uh, a PR to this repo, and then the docs is updated automatically. Um, but yeah, we, we can set up a nightly job or some some auto, some more automation there uh, eventually. Okay, so you have to go in and actually do uh, a, a sub module update in order to get in the new content on. Yes. Okay. So my idea would be to to have that done maybe automatically. Whenever either we can do it either whenever we merge something on the spec repo or we could do it on a nightly base. You can send an event for it, listen for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that's um I mean there is um well there's going to be a webhook trigger at least. Um That's what we get from GitHub. Yeah, also uh, a bit on the irony side, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could do something eventually to actually use uh, city events for CI for our SDKs, um, that would be nice. But I think it's a bit early days for that because we would need some kind of uh, yeah compute power for where to run some- Yeah, I was just thinking about that. It's a, it's a cool suggestion, but, but do we have some kind of infrastructure in CDF which we could reuse for such things and deploy our own containers and, and run such things? Well, we don't today, uh, but we do have some uh, funding from from the CDF. Uh, we have some some budget that we wanted to dedicate to uh, to this project. Uh, this one idea. I mean, to to start to begin with, we could run some things on GitHub Actions, uh, but that's of course not it's not a permanent environment. Um, so if we had some uh, Cloud credits from some cloud provider, we could we could do that. Um, I mean, if we if we have some uh, concrete idea of what the things we we would like to do, I think we can ask the CDF if we can get the budget for that. Mm -hmm. see. Also, if the team grows a little bit, probably because it's right now, I think. Uh, I would prefer to, to to focus on the on the spec uh, more for now. Mm -hmm. but that's cool. Okay, now I can unmute myself. Steve's done with his demo. <laughs> Apparently, he talks really loud. He's down the hall, <laughs> and you guys are picking his voice up. <laughs> Yeah, there was something in the in in the microphone setup, Tracy. I was picking in the voice. Really, yeah, I bought really this well. nice. I bought this microphone, and it has you know it has different um, settings on it to pick up only my voice. But apparently, it's so I have the gain turned all the way down, and it still picks up Steve if he's talking too loud. Insight into the life of Steve and Tracy at the club. <laughs> Yeah, he was very, very excited about that demo. 
must have been a good one. Anytime they ask the right questions, it's fun, right? Okay. Well, let us know if we need any help on that. Okay. Um, the other thing, the last thing I, I had in the agenda for today um, is this uh, PR uh, that I've been working on. Um, and yeah. There has been uh, some feedback, Matthias. I've not managed to, to answer to your uh, feedback yet. Uh, but maybe I can, what I can do, I can try to um, give a quick introduction about what I was trying to, to say here, to set up here. And then, yeah, I can update the, the spec according to the the feedback. Um, so what I, I, I could try to explain also if we have time uh, in more details what I was meaning with the different comments. But please go on. Thanks. Um, so what I'm trying to um, to do here is basically. Um, the, the model I was trying to, to set up is um, there is a concept of objects, or we call them subjects in the spec today. Maybe we could call them object as well. Uh, but basically having some uh, abstractions, uh, like we have the task run, pipeline runs, um, builds, um, environments, uh, deployments, and so forth. And then for each of this, uh, abstractions uh, have a set of fields that are well specified that are available uh, for them. I can sample. Right, so I've done this for task one and pipeline run in this uh, PR. Um, so these are the spec, the events, the pipeline run as an ID, a source, a pipeline name, status URL, and errors. Task run, a similar type of structure. Um, and this is a set of object is what basically makes our vocabulary. And this is where we bring this uh, kind of standardized or shared names that we can use then um, to extract information from these events across platforms. Um, but of course, uh, not uh, this entire object is not applicable to all the events. And that's where the, the mapping that I've done below. So for different predicates, so if a pipeline run is queued, um, only certain fields in the object will be available. So in case of queued, you will have an ID, possibly a source or a pipeline name, but you will not have a status URL or errors. Well, if you go down to the finished ones, then the status becomes a mandatory field and optionally you can have URL and errors as well. And so in my mind, this the, the kind of model I was uh, proposing to build uh, to have this define this kind of objects so this define this vocabulary. So we have one single place where we define all the terminology that we want to use, what are all the available objects that we can use across the, the specification. And then when combining this into specific, um, with specific predicates, then we would select which part of the objects are relevant for this predicate. And um, my idea was, it's not in this uh, PR yet, but once we start introducing links, uh, we could then use this link to reference to, to other uh, objects that are relevant. Uh, for the specific event. Um, along with this uh, model uh, in, in tables, I added uh, some JSON schema as well and some content into the cloud events binding. Basically in the cloud events binding, I added uh, how uh, these objects uh, and context that we defined on CD events maps into a cloud event. And for a lot of fields, there is uh, an easy match. 
uh, like the cloud events ID must be set to the CD events ID. So for the source uh, and type, for the subject, the cloud event subject would be the ID of the subject on CD event. Um, and then the data would be uh, basically JSON to the object uh, rendered uh, accordingly uh, to, to the schema. And I provided some initial version of the schema there as well. So this is a summarizes hopefully what I was trying to do here. I don't know both you and Matthias and Emily had some, some comments uh, if you want to. Champion. Yeah, um, Emma, do you want to go first or should I go first? Yeah, yeah, I can go first. I haven't provided that much comments or actually non -com no comments at all, I guess, in the PR itself. I provided some comments in the in the Slack channel there. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think this is an interesting way to describe it in, in one sense. I haven't really thought of it this way before, that each of the, the activities, what did you call them? The, uh, these are objects or, or subjects, and we can have uh, fields or properties that are mandatory depending on what uh, predicate you put on them or use for them in the events. <clears throat> to me, I've, I've seen the, the event definitions themselves as the objects. Uh, I mean, th th maybe that's just my, my experience because that's how it's done in Eiffel right now. Uh, and then the different properties are either available or not available at all in the various events, event types. Uh, so for example, for a uh, task run uh, started, that, that event type would have some of these properties in it, and the task run finished would have other properties in it, uh, in the event type itself. Uh, but now if we, like, if all these event types which have the same uh, core, or I should call it, and just have different predicates. If they should share the same object, then I agree that this is maybe a good good way to describe it. So I I don't want to say that this is not the way to go <laughs> at all. I think we can continue evaluating this this way to describe it. That's that's probably fine. Uh, I was a bit concerned that we we create another level in the event definitions themselves. Uh, because to me, I mean, we have the cloud events first, and then we have uh, the, the top level of our own uh, CD event. And then this subject or object comes even below there. I was thinking if we could somehow flatten that object onto the top of the CD event definition itself. Uh, but that doesn't make much sense, maybe, if we see these as objects that are tampered with from different uh, predicate event types. Uh, let me see. So basically, you would be, if I can get an example uh, here. Yeah. So you mean in, in here, rather than having the subject, and the task run, and then these fields within here. Um, yeah, to, to move all these fields kind of top level here in the JSON. Yeah, I mean, everything, all, all this event is about the task run subject. It, it isn't about anything else. So, why do we need those two extra levels? That, that was my first uh, just thought when I, when I saw this proposal. Um, but I, I cannot get your idea with it, so I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, we will in all event types, we will then have this subject, and we will have the uh, what do we call it now? The uh, <laughs> the task run thing. Uh, so each event will have such a level additionally, and then the different properties for that specific event type family uh, in each of them. Uh, it might be it may be a bit confusing that we have ID on both this level and on the outer level there, uh, for example. Yes, yeah, so the outer level, 
um, will actually That's a cloud event. Be, it's a cloud yeah. event. Um, so it's going to be an HTTP header. Um, yeah. And then everything from the subject on, under NIF will go into the payload. Um, uh, aha, so it will, well, the header depends on what messaging format I guess you use, or won't all this be in the JSON uh, blob of the event within the, uh, I mean, the, the data body part of the cloud event, right? Oh, no, or you yeah, can yeah, see right, some kind sorry. of um, No, you're right. I was just mixing things up. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, the 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 cloud event context is the top one, and this would be yeah. the payload. Yeah. So if we would see the complete event, both cloud events and CD event here, we would have these two merged into one JSON structure, right? Where the CD event context is in the data value. So let's say the data property in the city cloud events would have yeah, this as yeah. a value. The, the cloud event context is basically sent as HTTP headers when you're using the HTTP binding. And the city event context would be the, yeah, this JSON uh, as payload to this cloud event. But I guess you could see it. Uh, at least when we talk about it, we can we can combine everything into one big JSON, so we can see kind of like the whole message as it is. Uh, even that's not might might not be the way it's serialized, but to get the idea of how a complete event, including the cloud events, look like, if you get my point. Um, yeah, I was not sure how to to render that in, in one single one. Uh, but yeah, and also I realized that in the CD event context down below, the, the subject is there twice and it shouldn't be. So that's that's a, a mistake. So the first one, which is just the, the ID, should not be there. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, definitely we, we could we could have a way to visualize this as to as, as one single JSON. I just didn't want to give the impression that everything would go into the payload. So this, this separation into JSON is allowed to show that the first chunk is what, what is cloud events context. And the second chunk is what goes into the, uh, into the payload. Yeah, but what if you would see this coming on an AMQP bus, for example, uh, I guess you would see the whole JSON blob. Uh, where the CD events is part of the data value, right? Is this data value in that major blob or? or maybe I don't really, maybe because I'm, I don't have much experience of cloud events, so maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. Yeah, I'm not sure how the MQTD uh, binding uh, works. So I think that the, Usually with, with cloud events, the, the idea with the context is that it's something that um, within the specific binding that you're using, it's something that you can access without having to kind of parse the entire body of the message, right? So if, um, um, and that allows for um, using this data for like routing of the, of the cloud events or filtering decision and so forth so that if you have some processors along in, in, in the in the road uh, along the road uh, like you want if you send all your messages to to a bus and you want to pick only certain messages based on a subscription model or you have some kind of filtering logic you can do based on on what it's, what's in the cloud event context Yeah, um, but, but it's still not in the message header, is it? It's still in, in the actual message, I believe, or in the uh, the payload of the message, I believe, on the MQP. Plus, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm trying to paste something now in the chat. I'm not sure if it makes sense. Um, so this is how I at least envision that it could look in a cloud event. So you have like the first part, the cloud event part in the top there, of course, and then it's a data field, which 
if you if you if you use if you use the HTTP binding, that's not how it looks like. It's um, okay. Or I I don't I may be mistaken, but at least it is the the top fields are set as HTTP headers. That's for sure. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure if they are replicated into the payload, uh, but I don't think they are. There might be some modes where they are, but I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty convinced they are not, to be honest. Oh, okay. So then then I'm mistaken. It's my, my bad. Um, what they do in the, um, in the cloud event specification, I have, they have this kind of JSON to, to show the, the whole context and payload in, in one, one go, uh, which we could do as well here uh, if you wanted to. But yeah, at least for the HTTP binding, um, everything which is in, in the, in the context is then transported as part of the HTTP headers. Yeah, so if we, for example, look in the cloud event spec, uh, link there, in the end uh, of that page, there's an example where it's serialized as JSON, the whole cloud event is serialized as, as JSON. Yeah, in the from there, and there we see the data field in in the bottom, which is actually the the payload for the the content, which is then uh, handled by the data con. Uh, it's interpreted using the data content type there, text XML. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But maybe it doesn't yeah, need mean, to look if it's HTTP, for example. Yeah, I found this. I think I find this effective in terms of showing what what is the content is going to be, uh, but uh, I find it confusing. From uh, let's say, I mean, this this pack is binding agnostic, so I think you need you need one way to represent what is going to be um, in your message, regardless of the binding, um, and that's the content that is going to to be displayed as JSON, serialized as JSON. But that's not necessarily uh, the way the cloud event is serialized when it's transporting or transported on a specific binding. Makes sense. Okay, makes sense. Um, but I, I, I kind of like also actually now. Of course, I'm colored, but it's uh, uh, somewhere it would be nice to have a whole kind of like. Um, like structure of it, uh, because if I remember right, for example, I think that if you, for example, send over Kafka, uh, if you use Cloud Events Kafka binding, you will also get uh, a kind of like a a, a message uh, and see the whole entire structure. Uh, I don't know how we want to do it because I guess I I, I understand your concern there, uh, not to confuse people. Well, this is the way we look if you use the HP binding, but uh, it's kind of a nice to see how, how things are glued together in some kind of way. Uh, Maybe we could add those examples as well. Uh, some, what it would look like if we serialize it as JSON or just take those examples, HTTP or JSON serialization, which is what happens in AMCupid and I guess in Kafka as well. Maybe then. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we could yeah, shorten the example a bit, maybe. I yeah, I think it could be a good idea to show a full event in, in different, so you get the idea of how it's, uh, how it connects. Right, okay. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it would basically be the the cloud event context, I think. Uh, and 
I'm thinking, sorry, just because this is a cloud event binding. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I think from from a from a pure CD event point of view, I think what what we have in the bottom is the the entire thing. Um, so the only thing extra that you have in the cloud event binding, so in the top part, if you will, that is not in the bottom is the spec version, which is fixed to 1.0 and the data content type, which is fixed to text JSON, right? But everything else is data, which is copied from the CD event context into cloud events. So there's no additional data there. So mm -hmm. I, I think, in, in the if I was going to to render a CD event uh, on something different than cloud events, I think that the bottom uh, JSON would be the the way uh, to show the entire content basically. Apart from the double subject there, that is a mistake. Mm. No, I guess uh, as you exemplified with the HTTP uh, headers there, I think that that makes sense. Otherwise, to, to me, it's a bit strange that we duplicate all the cloud event fields into the CD events since they are anyway in the same JSON structure if it's like serialized or flattened to one JSON structure. Uh, but I, I guess I get your point. But then to not confuse other readers, <laughs> similarly as I have been confused, and maybe Matthias as well. It would be good to have some additional, uh, maybe two examples then on how it would look in an HTTP interface and a Kafka interface, respectively, something like that. Okay. If possible. Yeah. Absolutely. So I pasted in the chat their link to the uh, JSON format. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit, uh, click on more. Uh, there, this example event with JSON object value. Uh, so that that is an example for <coughs> for I guess how we envision it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you see the just right below the HTTP. Mm. You have the HTTP headers, is that this, and then the data, which is that. And if you compare it with the one above, that's the JSON part. So realization, you got all the HTTP headers and as part of the JSON, and then the the data is an extra one. Hmm. That makes sense actually now. Nice. That was a good. But I, th I think at at at, the, at this. Stage there's uh, in the CD events. I don't think there is anything of these fields that, uh, apart from what what I put here as part of the cloud event context, that is would be needed from routing point of view or filtering point of view. Um, that was my impression, at least for for the work that we've done so far. Uh, but it might be that. As we go and implement more POCs, that we realize that certain fields uh, needs to be kind of um, yeah it needs to be part of the context um, as well. You mean of the cloud event context or yeah the cloud event context yeah <laughs> we might need to have some kind of extension to cloud events maybe if we find such things. Yeah yeah that's what I meant yeah yeah yeah. I guess it depends how much pain we feel with the routing. If the uh, if there is data inside of it that we need, um, so then we can probably bring it out for routing reasons. But uh, we can start off with what we have and and then uh, add on as we need instead of trying to add too much in the beginning. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the the type of the subject is, is part of the type, so it's in, it's in the type. So if you want to say take all the events for a task run, you have that in there. And if you're 
interested in a specific asset, let's say task run one, two, three, and then you have that in the subject. Um, and at least for the use cases I, I could think of, um, that's, or I say I, I would be interested in all events coming from a certain source and that's in there too, but we may find other different use cases later. I guess one property that I maybe missed then in the cloud events there, is, of course we haven't decided to have it yet, but I would like to see a schema there somewhere to see that, that helps you parse the data, the actual CD event content, because the, I guess the schema is on cloud events level, right? Um, if you would have it. Yes, that's a good yeah, point. Data so schema. I, I, yeah. I added the, the initial schema. So I actually started creating the schema, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't, I forgot to put the, to put it in here. It would be in the context, in the cloud event context here, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because then, yeah, if oh, we're almost out of time, but if we go to the schema, then I guess your idea there is that the, the top level of the schema would be more or less the same for any event type since they have these standard fields and, and the subject, or if we should call it object or whatever on the top. Um, yes, right. indeed. So actually this is the, the schema. So that's the shared. Mm. Um, and you have ID type, source, time, self version, subject. And then the subject is defined as any of, and then it points to all the other schemas for the specific objects. And um, yeah, so in, in, in this model, it, 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 it makes it maybe a bit more compact, the schema. Um, uh, if you were to put push the uh, fields up uh, to another, uh, to the top level, then you would have to have different schemas uh, for the whole message, which is also an option. I'm not, I'm not sure which one is best. Uh, this, this is what kind of, uh, felt, felt naturally in my mind, but then I don't have a strong argument to say this is, uh, this is the best. I, I guess one drawback with this would be that every time we add a new event type, we need to add it to this index JSON here. Uh, we could also do it the other way around. So each event type itself had this uh, context level within it somehow. The, the, the same, all of them use the same context and link in that the other way around, but uh, that's not really how the structure of the event looks right now. That would probably require that we created some kind of context object on the top level in, instead and encapsulated all those other fields in there. Right. Or for example, if the, uh, yeah. the subject would be look, uh, have the same fields in all events, then we can link to a subject uh, sub uh, uh, schema. But that's a little bit different ideas than you have. Uh, one thing we could also think about when it comes to uh, this is um, schema validators and how easy time it is for them to use sub schemas. Uh, in AFL, we uh, we kind of like, we had the idea of introducing sub schemas, but to kind of like abandon that idea to make it easier for um, the schema validators. Uh, it seemed like it's easier to have just a flat schema without any links. Uh, but uh, we can take a look at that. Uh, but, so yeah, it's, it's something to think about at least uh, there. I don't know if you got that that last point for the schema validator, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, and it, it, so I, to be honest, I yeah I, I follow the what's what's in the JSON uh, schema uh, spec uh, try, but um, it may be that different validators do not support uh, this. So yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, there, there are there are other ways we can from code point of view. There are other ways we can. Uh, make sure we don't have the replication. I mean, we, we, can, we can use some kind of um, templating mechanism to define this, the, this different schemas and then render them so that they are complete. 
as part of this pack, if you know what I mean. So mm, that's um, how we're intending to do with the knife. Sure, I think Matthias uh, it would be valuable to, to show how this would be. I mean, what it would look like if we did this the Eiffel way, so to say, which I talked about the other way, the other way around. Uh, yeah, uh, we probably need then to. We can, then, we can, then we can discuss what it what what would be best for for now and for the future, because this is quite core, right? We we need this is core concept that we're setting now, so so we we shouldn't change this very easily when once we have set it, I guess. All right. I think it would be good uh, either if we did not this stuff yet. Oh, we have the time. Sorry. Yeah, we got to drop for another meeting. Uh, but yeah, no, thanks for. Okay. Our, I think it's good discussion. Thank you very um, much. Good work there, Andrea, on the on the pull request. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Till next time. Talk to you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.